family members from around the world who are here to see Shincheonji online seminar, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, it is nice to meet you. My name is Kim Che Hun from Andrew Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and I'll be your host today. God had hidden things regarding the kingdom of heaven in parables, but as it is the appointed time, the revealed gospel of heaven is now being preached to the whole world. First, I would like to give thanks and glory to God who gives us perception and grace. I hope the family members of faith from around the world who are in attendance today with their heart of seeking the truth to be filled with God's love of the truth. And we will offer up a prayer to our Father God before we start the seminar. Our Most Holy Father God, who is life and who desires every person to know the truth, we give all thanks and glory to you for graciously allowing us this hour of the online seminar, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. You have sent the promised shepherd in order to fulfill the 6,000 years of your work described in the Bible and had him see and hear your will. Please let your will be testified through this online seminar today. We also ask before you to open up the way to heaven for all the family members of faith from around the world. Please give the eyes to see, ears to hear, and mind to perceive is so that they can clearly distinguish between good and evil and perfectly understand your will. Let your precious words that come out of the lips of the instructor today become engraved in the heart of every attendee and let everyone receive your grace. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is life. Amen. Before we begin, I would like to let you know that this seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to the COVID-19 regulations and social distancing guidelines. Everyone, have you ever seen a stamp of God, God's seal? If you pay close attention to the seminar today, you'll be able to understand God's seal, God's trumpet, the song of Moses, who was God's servant, and even the song of the Lamb. It says in John 1.1 1, 1, that the Word is God. And I pray and hope that all of you will experience God's love of the truth through today's Word of Heaven. Now, let us welcome up Instructor Kim Mangun from Andrew Tribe, who will be teaching us the introductory lesson 16, the figurative seal, trumpet, and song. Let's give him a big round of applause. To all pastors, theology students, and believers all over the world who carry out a life of faith, having hope in heaven, it's nice to meet you. I am Kim mang a lecturer who teaches the word from among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, who learned the word from the tribe leader of Andrew tribe. And our tribe leader was taught by Chairman Lee Man-hee of Shincheonji. I sincerely thank you for attending the Shincheonji Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and their True Meanings online seminar today. I trust you heard well regarding the parable of mountain last time. Jesus spoke the secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven and parables according to God's commands and also promised in John chapter 16, verse 25. That, that a time will come when these things will be made known plainly. And now that the time has come, today's prophecies have been fulfilled and the realities have appeared. So I hope this seminar will be a time to understand and perceive the realities of the secrets of heaven. The title of today's topic from the Word will be Introductory Lesson 16, The Figurative Seal, Mark, Trumpet, and Song. I believe that pastors are well aware of this, but I'd appreciate it if you could listen again and allow me to explain it today. Before proceeding to the explanation, I would like to give the answer to the parable first. The parable of seal is 
the word of God. Seal here means stamp. The second is a parable of trumpet, which is a word that makes known the events that took place, and the parable of song is a word that is preached. Today, let's take a look through the Bible together to understand why the answer to the parables are this way. So first, let's take a look at the parable of seal. Let's read the verse regarding the parable in Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 to 3. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Yes, it speaks of when the time of fulfillment of Revelation comes. An angel will bring the seal of the living God and seal the servants of God on their foreheads. Then the seal of God brought by the angel is not an actual physical stamp, right? If I am a servant of God, I must understand what the seal is and be sealed with it. There are two types of seals in the Bible, physical seals and spiritual seals. So the seal has the meaning or purpose of a stamp. All of you have one of these stamps, correct? If we first look at the characteristics of a physical stamp, what is traced or recorded on a stamp? Yes, that is correct. Your name may be traced or recorded on it. So, stamping your name means that you agree to acknowledge the contents of the contract and it will mean that you own it. The true meaning of the parable of the spiritual seal is this, the Word of God that is sealed. Depending on which word we accept determines whether we receive God's seal and becomes God's property, or whether we receive Satan's mark and become Satan's property. So the content of the reference verse will be that God will put the seal of God upon those who belong to Him in the last days, indicating that they are His own and His chosen people. Then, let's look at the biblical basis for why the parable of the seal is the word. Isn't God's name written on God's seal? So what does the name of God mean? Let's read the words of John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes, it says that the Word is God. Then the name of God is the Word of God. What does this mean? To believe in God's Word is to believe in God, correct? And not believing in God's Word means not believing in God. Therefore, one can see that the Word is equal to God. Therefore, just as the name on the seal means it's indicating oneself, the name of God is the Word. Next, there is a position of sealing and a position to receive the seal. Let's take a closer look at this. Let's read John chapter 3, verse 31 to 33. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. Yes, it is Jesus who comes from above. It says that when he testifies of what he has seen and heard, the one who accepts that testimony has sealed it by saying that God is true. So the one who accepts the testimony becomes the one who is sealed, correct? In other words, 
The shepherd who speaks on behalf of God, which is the seal of God, testifies to what he has seen and heard in heaven. And the one that hears that testimony, where they say, says in their heart that it is true and accepts it with their heart, God seals that person and makes them His own, His possession. So, to seal or mark with God's seal means to be chosen by the heavens and to testify to the Word. And to be sealed or marked means to, be, to have been chosen by God, to hear the Word, acknowledge and accept it, and engrave it in one's heart. If you look at the words of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, it says to be able to write the Word of God so that one may run with it. Yes, to be able to read while running means to have the Word engraved in the heart. In this way, we should, always, we should also engrave the Word of God in our hearts as if we are being sealed. So let's become the reality of those who are sealed. If God's seal is the Word of God, then Satan's mark becomes Satan's lies. If one heard the lies of the scribes and Pharisees who were false pastors at the time of the first coming and accepted them in their heart, they would have received Satan's mark and become Satan's possession. The Bible recorded in advance that this does not end at the time of the first coming, but that this will also happen at the fulfillment of the book of Revelation today. Then let's understand the work of sealing at the time of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 to 3, it says that another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God, and we will put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. What is the seal at the second coming here? Even at the first coming, when the one who have seen and heard the things of heaven and testified to them, those who received the testimony were those who were sealed at that time. Likewise, even at the second coming, there is the one who testifies to what was seen and heard in heaven. He is a shepherd who received and ate the open book in Revelation chapter 10. And he is the new John who saw and heard the events of the entire book of Revelation. When he testifies to what he has seen and heard, those who accept that testimony will be those who are sealed in this era. Then, let's read the words of Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 to find out the reality of those who are sealed at the time of Revelation. Then I looked, and there before me was a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him, 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. The 144,000 are said to be those who are, who are sealed of the 12 tribes of Israel in Revelation chapter 7, 12,000 in each tribe. Then today, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, by harvesting people born of God's seed, and by him who overcomes and the twelve tribe leaders together doing the work of sealing, the new kingdom and new people are created according to Revelation, which are the twelve tribes of Shincheonji. There are two types of spiritual seals, the seal of God and the seal of Satan. If you go to Revelation chapter 13, there is an event where Satan's mark 666 is stamped. This means that the words or testimony of Satan is being stamped. And at this time, if one listens to the lies that Satan testifies, receives it in one's heart and accepts it, they will, re will have received Satan's mark. This parable, before the proper time came and the reality appeared, no one knew. But now that the time has come, these events have fulfilled. And we know because there is a witness that was there at the scene of events who saw it all. Regarding the events and the detailed realities, they were discussed in Revelation chapter 13 of the Revelation seminar. 
So if you haven't seen or heard that yet, I hope you'll watch and confirm. Then whose seal should we receive? If one receives Satan's mark, they become Satan's property and will go to the lake of fire and sulfur, hell. And one receives God's seal, they will become God's possession and enter into the first resurrection and the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, we must all be very careful so that we do not receive Satan's mark. And I pray that you will receive God's seal and become the people of the kingdom of heaven. Next, let's look at regarding the parable of trumpet. First, let's read Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. It is prophesied that at the time of the second coming of the Lord, the trumpet will be blown and the elect will be gathered. Even, even if you know the answer to this, I hope you listen to the end. There are two trumpets in the Bible. There is a physical trumpet that was blown when the city of Jericho collapsed, and there is a spiritual trumpet that is compared to a physical one. As a spiritual trumpet, its true meaning is the word that makes known the events. For the biblical basis for this answer, let's read Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. Yes, it says to raise your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their rebellion and their sins. That is why God uses people as instruments to make things known. When this prophecy fulfills, God chose a promised shepherd like Isaiah on this earth and declared to the house of the chosen people of their rebellion and sins. In summary, the one who uses a person as a trumpet to blow will be an angel, a spirit. And the sound of the trumpet will be the, the sound of proclaiming to the events. Next, to find out where the trumpet is sounded, let's read Isaiah chapter 18, verse 3. All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised in the mountains, you will see it, and when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. Yes, all the people of the world and all who live on the earth are told when banners are raised on the mountains, they must see it, and when a trumpet sounds, they must hear it. That mountain is the holy mountain of God, Mount Zion, as seen in Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Then what is the reality of the fulfillment of this prophecy? Let's read John chapter 14, verse 24. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Yes, looking at the words of John chapter 14, verse 24, doesn't Jesus say, These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. These words mean that the Holy Spirit of God was working within Jesus. In this way, Jesus was a trumpet at the first coming to proclaim the Word of God. And the place where Jesus and the twelve disciples testified to that Word was spiritual Mount Zion, and it was a kingdom of God on this earth. Then those who heard the sound of the trumpet proclaimed by Jesus, gathered and believed at that time, were chosen and saved by God in that era. Next, we will look at the prophecies regarding the second coming. If you look at the words of Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 to 31, it says that immediately after the distress of those days, the sun, moon, and stars will darken and fall. 
At that time, the Son of Man, which is Jesus, is prophesied that He will come and will send His angels with a loud trumpet call and gather His elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. If you will look at the image here, I will explain. It says that on that day, immediately after the distress, the sun, moon, and stars darken and fall. The meaning of the sun, moon, and stars darkening and falling means that God's chosen people were judged and it became spiritual night. At this time, Jesus prophesied that He would send the angels and blow the trumpets and gather the elect from the four winds and gather them to Mount Zion. The sound of the trumpet is the sound of proclaiming the events that took place at the location of Revelation's fulfillment. And those who hear the sound of the trumpet and gather at Mount Zion will become the children of the kingdom of heaven who partake in the work of salvation today in this era. So do you know how many trumpets are blown in the book of Revelation? Yes, you may know, but let's examine how many trumpets and what they contain in the book of Revelation. Let's read Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 to 2. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Yes, it says that when the seventh seal was opened, the seven angels had the seven trumpets. Here, the angel is a spirit, and the trumpet is a person. It says that when the time of the fulfillment of Revelation comes, these seven angels will blow using the seven people as trumpets. And these seven trumpets do not appear and sound at any time. But in Revelation chapter 6, when the seventh seal is opened, after the sun, moon, and stars darken and fall and become spiritual night, the seven trumpets appear. At this time, God selects these seven people who are at the location of the events of Revelation and has them testify about what they had witnessed as trumpets. And six of these seven trumpets are sounded in Revelation chapters 8 and 9. And the last seventh trumpet is sounded in Revelation chapter 11. Up to the first six trumpets will be the sound of the trumpets declaring re the rebellion and the sins of the tabernacle of the chosen people. And how the seventh and last trumpet sounds different, let's see this and read Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and He will reign forever and ever. The sound of the seventh trumpet is a trumpet of salvation and the sound of the kingdom of the world becoming the kingdom of God. Therefore, as congregation members, we must make all effort to be born again by hearing the sound of the seventh and last trumpet that proclaims the realities of the book of Revelation, the fulfillment of the New Testament, and become the people of God's kingdom from the kingdom of the world. To continue, we will read the words of Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished just as he announced to his servants the prophets. Yes, it says when the seventh angel blows his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, fulfilled. So, do you know what God's secret or mystery is here? To see what mysteries are fulfilled, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. But the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, 
and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the moral with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. Verse 52 says that when the trumpet is sounded, the dead will be raised imperishable. What does it mean to be raised? Yes, that's correct. It's resurrection. And since it was said that we will also be changed, those who are living will be changed to be like the glory of Jesus, according to the words of Philippians chapter 3, verse 21, and will have eternal life. Resurrection and eternal life is a hope of all Christians will come true. When will it happen? That is, it will come true, it will fulfill at the sound of the seventh trumpet, the last trumpet being sounded. The present time is when the seventh trumpet Revelation, in Revelation chapter 11 is being sounded. The seventh trumpet says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, that I, Jesus, will send my messenger to testify of these things to the churches. The shepherd who testifies to this reality, to this fact, will be the reality of the seventh trumpet in this era. Isn't the prophecy of Revelation and the testimony of its fulfillment, followed by the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings going out to people all over the world? Indeed, the world is changing into the kingdom of God. And there has never been a time in Christian history that a trumpet has sounded as loudly as it is today. Because of this, many pastors, churches, seminaries, and non-believers around the world are hearing the revealed word of Shincheonji today. No trumpet will be greater or could be greater than this. So who is the reality of the seventh trumpet? That is, the one who overcame, the new John. There are two types of spiritual trumpets, God's trumpet and Satan's trumpet. Then what is Satan's trumpet? Conversely, Satan's trumpet are lies and speaks of man's teachings. And the place where Satan's trumpet is sounded, as is seen in Revelation chapter 18, which is Babylon, the denominations of demons. God has conveyed His will and purpose through a trumpet in every era. And He wanted His will to be widely spread to many peoples. So He composed and sang them as a song. Finally, we will find out what the true meaning of song is, and also look at the new song that only 144,000 can learn and sing at Mount Zion. First, let's read the words of Revelation chapter 15, verse 3. And sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Yes, the parable of song is the word that is preached. I'm sure that pastors may be well aware of this, but since this is an important message, I would appreciate it if you'll listen to the end. In the word that is preached, there are prophecies, and there must also be realities that have been fulfilled that are preached. At the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 15, it says that the Song of Moses and the Song of the Lamb will be sung. Then, we should know what this song is, correct? In the Bible, there are literal songs and there are spiritual songs that uses literal songs figuratively. In this way, the true meaning of the spiritual song, figuratively compared to the characteristics of literal songs, is the word that is preached. 
Since old times, the Word of God has been written into actual songs to help people remember the Word. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 54 says that your decrees are the theme of my song. And in verse 172, it says, May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. In other words, God's word is a song. The words of Moses was a song at that time, and the words of the four Gospels was also a song. Then, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 19 to 21, which describes the song of Moses. Now, write down for yourselves this song and teach it to the Israelites and have them sing it, so that it may be a witness for me against them. When I have brought them into the land, flowing with milk and honey, the land I promised an oath to their forefathers, and when they eat their fill and thrive, they will turn to other gods and worship them, rejecting me and breaking my covenant. And when many disasters and difficulties come upon them, this song will testify against them, because it will not be forgotten by their descendants. I know what they are disposed to do, even before I bring them into the land I promised them an oath. The words of Deuteronomy chapter 31 is the word and song that God taught the people of Israel to sing through Moses before they entered the land of Canaan. The content of that song was a prophecy that when they entered the land of Canaan, they will eat their full and thrive, and then they will forsake God and serve other gods and idols. That is why he said that the song will be like a witness when they break the covenant and face disaster and tribulation. In this way, God made the future events into a song and told them to testify to the next generation. And when the prophecies fulfilled, this song became their evidence. So the true meaning of the song, uh, the parable of the song, is the word that is testified. So what is the song of Moses? It will be the words of the Old Testament that began with Moses, and the Song of the Lamb, which Jesus is the Lamb. So, it will be the words of the New Testament that began with Jesus. And to sing a song means to preach the Word. There is also a new song. And to understand what the new song means, let's read Revelation chapter 14, verse 3. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. It says that the 144,000 at Mount Zion learn and sing a new song. If the song is the word that is testified, then the new song will be the gospel of the fulfillment of prophecies. So when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, the, realities, the reality that is fulfilled according to the book of Revelation becomes a new song. This is called a new song because it is a new gospel and a new word that no one in the whole world has ever heard of. It says that no one can learn the new song except the 144,000 who are harvested and sealed at Mount Zion. Only the 12 tribes of Mount Zion can learn the new song. Then why can one learn only at Mount Zion? The reason is that there is a promised shepherd who has seen and heard the events of the entire book of Revelation. So today, at the time of the second coming, we must be sealed with the new song that the promised shepherd, the one who overcame, testifies to, 
so that we can become the kingdom and priests that belong to God and be saved. Now, let me speak of the conclusion. The parable of seal we learn today is the word of God, and the trumpet is a word that makes known the events. And the song is the word that is testified, and the new song is the gospel of the fulfillment of prophecies. At the second coming of the Lord, Jesus comes to Mount Zion with the angels, blows the trumpet, gathers the elect, seals them, and teaches them the new song. At this time, the reality of the seal and trumpet that Jesus chose will become the one who overcomes who is victorious in the fight against Satan's false shepherd. And the revealed word that the one who overcame testifies to is the sound of the trumpet, the word that is sealing, and the new song we learn today. The saints who are waiting for the second coming of the Lord must hear the sound of the trumpet of the revealed word through the one who overcame and gather at Mount Zion where God and Jesus are together with and be sealed with the revealed word of the new song and become God's new kingdom and new people. In conclusion, if we do not understand the secrets of heaven, we will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. So today, since the reality spoken of in parables has appeared, I hope that through this seminar, everyone will have the opportunity to understand and perceive the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven that Jesus has clearly made known to us just as He promised. Next time is Introductory Lesson 17 regarding the parable of living creature and wind. There are wonderful instructor who, are, who is better than me that are waiting to see you. So I hope you will join us again next time. Finally, we will say our final goodbyes together by saying we are one. We are one in God and in Jesus. We are one. Let us pray. God, our Holy Father, we thank you so much. Now that the proper time has come, we are truly grateful to you for fulfilling the Bible and granting the precious trumpet from the holy mountain of Zion so that all peoples of the world can hear it. Please remember every heart who hears the sound of this trumpet and lead the way so that everyone can come to your kingdom of Zion. Through this seminar, which is given to all pastors, church members, and congregation members around the world, please allow them to receive much grace and perceive and understand and be sealed. We pray that our Lord will guide us to the very end, and we ask for all this. In Jesus' name, we earnestly pray. Amen. Yes, thank you for listening to the end. The four living creatures look very strange. They look like a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. What are animals such as these doing in the spiritual realm of God? The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair, the whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. So the sun, moon, and stars fall to the earth. I hope you perceive the secrets of heaven and become the people of heaven whom God acknowledges. As you've just seen from the video, instructor Bae Hyo Jae from Philip Tribe will teach us the introductory lesson 17, the figurative creatures, and win next. Please do attend our next seminar so you can receive God's love and grace of the truth in abundance. The revealed theology of Shincheonji is the gospel of heaven, and God is giving it to us through the promised shepherd whom he promised in the Bible. I sincerely hope these words of heaven will pour upon your heart and soul like rain and that all of you will enter the kingdom of heaven. If you have any questions regarding our online seminars of the Gospel of Heaven that are broadcast to the whole world, or if you're curious about other things regarding the Revealed Theology, please call the number on the screen. We'll be glad to answer all of your questions in detail.
We'll finish the seminar here with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as if also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With this, we'll conclude Shincheonji Online Seminar today, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. Thank you very much for being with us.